In this video, you're going to learn how to work with variation equations. We're going to talk about direct variation, inverse variation, joint variation, as well as combined variation. And we're going to do this in six uh, examples. So we're going to talk about how to work with tables. We're going to talk about how to write equations. We're going to talk about how to use those equations to find particular values. So let's dive into this variation video here. So the first example, it says y varies directly with x. y is equal to 8 when x equals 2. Find out what y is when x is equal to 10. Now, our general form of a direct variation equation is this form here, y equals k times x, or some teachers will write this as y equals a times x. k or a is like your constant of variation. It tells us how x and y are related to one another. So in this case, if we know that y varies directly with x, let's start off with our general equation, and then it gives us some information. So y is equal to 8 when x is equal to 2. So let's substitute those values in so we can solve for our constant of variation. If we divide both sides by 2, you can see here that k is coming out to 4. So if we take that 4 and we put it back in for k, we have y is equal to 4 times x. That's our direct variation equation. Now let's use that direct variation equation to find out what y is when x is equal to 10. So I'm going to substitute 10 in for x. 4 times 10 is equal to 40. And you got it. Let's take a look at number 2. This one's an inverse variation equation. y varies inversely with x. y is equal to 12 when x is equal to 3. Find y when x is equal to 9. So what I normally do is I start by writing my general equation. If it's inverse, y is equal to k divided by x, or you could say y equals a divided by x. But notice that the variable here is in the denominator. With direct, you can see that variable is in the numerator. So I would write this as y is equal to k divided by x. When y is 12, x is equal to 3. So let's substitute those values. To solve for k, instead of dividing by 3, Let's multiply both sides of this equation by 3. So k is equal to 36. Now you want to take that 36 and put it back in for k. So now we have a more specific equation, y equals 36 divided by x. Find out what y is when x equals 9. So what we're going to do is replace x with 9. 36 divided by 9 is equal to 4. And you got it. So I usually think of this as three steps. I think of my general equation as step one. Then I give a more specific equation. I think of that as like step two. And we get that by substituting in the values that they give us. And then you use that more specific equation to solve. And I think of that as like step three. So three steps. Let's take a look at example number three. Okay, for example number three, now we're given these two tables, okay, two part question A and B, and it says, is it a direct, inverse, or neither equation? And can you find the constant of variation k? And can you write the variation equation? Now, what we want to do is let's go to our direct variation equation. When we have y equals k times x, if we solve for k, that constant of variation, what we'd have to do is divide both sides by x to get that k by itself. So direct. You can think of that as if y divided by x just gives you the same quantity each time with that same constant of variation, then you're going to know it's direct. With the inverse variation equation, see how we have y equals k divided by x? Here to get k by itself, we have to multiply both sides by x. So you can see that x times y should be giving us the same constant of variation, and that'll tell us that it's an inverse variation equation. So let's go ahead and take that information here, and let's test it out. So if I do y divided by x, so 3 divided by 1 gives me 3, 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So that tells me that this is actually a direct variation equation, and our k value is equal to 3. So let's go ahead and do that. k equals 3, and our equation is y equals 3 times x. Now sometimes I like to test it out. So if I put 5 in, oh yeah, 3 times 5 is equal to 15. I know I got it right. For number uh, letter B though, let's do that same thing. Y divided by x. So 1 divided by negative 12, that's negative 1 12th. 2 divided by negative 6, that's negative 1 third if you reduce. 
that's not the same number. So it's not a direct variation equation. Let's try multiplying the x and y coordinates together. Negative 12 times 1 is negative 12. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Negative 12, negative 12, negative 12. So here what's happening when we multiply the x and y's together, we're getting that same constant k. And so what that tells us is this is an inverse variation. This one here was direct. So let's write down inverse variation. And our k value we said is equal to negative 12. And if we write our equation, it's going to be y equals negative 12 divided by x. Now we can check it. Let's put in an x value, negative 2. Negative 12 divided by negative 2. Yeah, it matches 6, so you know you got it right. So sometimes students get a little bit confused because they say, Mario, I thought directly we were multiplying k times x. How come we're dividing here? You know, they think, okay, this is multiplying, this is dividing. Or with inverse, they say, oh, this is dividing, but here we're multiplying. Why is it the opposite? The reason it's uh, different is because we're solving for k. We're getting that constant by itself. And so we had to rewrite the equations to isolate that k. So great job if you could follow that one. Now, let's go to example number four. Okay, let's dive into example number four now. It says y varies jointly with x and z. Y is negative 36 when x equals 2 and z equals 3. How can we find y when x is negative 1 and z is 4? Now, when they say joint variation, we're looking at something that's in this form right here. Y varies jointly with x and z. And notice you always have to have a constant of variation, whether that's k or a or whatever variable that you want to use there. So in this case, we've got y varies jointly with x and z. Notice these are all multiplied together. They give us some information. Y is negative 36 when x is 2 and z is equal to 3. So all I'm doing is just substituting in those values so we can solve for k, our constant of variation. So here we're getting 6 times k equals negative 36. Divide both sides by 6 and you can see that k is coming out to negative 6. So let's go ahead and put that back in for k. So we have y equals negative 6 times x times z. I like to put a little line through my z so I don't think it's the number 2. And then now it says find out what y is when x equals negative 1 and z is equal to 4. So we're going to substitute those values in. So we have y equals negative 6 times negative 1 times 4, which gives us... 24. And you got it. So if you want to process, you know, what I like to do is thinking of three steps. I like to think of, okay, write my general solution. Then I substitute in the given value, solve for k, put it back in. This is like a more specific equation that we can use. And then now I'll use that more specific equation to solve. So kind of like three steps. Let's take a look at example five and six where we talk about combined variation. Write a combined variation model for number five and number six. So number five says y varies directly with the square root of x and inversely with the cube root of z. So this is combined, meaning it could be a combination of more than one type. Now let's start off here. Y varies directly. Now direct means it's in this form here. Notice the k and the x are multiplied together and they're in the numerator. So y varies directly with the square root of x. Now you always want to have a constant of variation whether it's k or a or another uh, letter. And then inversely, now inversely means that the variable is going to go in the denominator. Okay, so inversely with the cube root, cube root of z. And you got it. So when I write these problems, what I sometimes like to do is read through the problem quickly just to get a general overview, and then go ahead and dive into the details. Remember, you always want to have that constant of variation. I usually put it in the numerator. That's generally the accepted way of writing it. And then remember, direct, it's in the numerator. Inverse, that quantity goes in the denominator, and you got it. So for number six, L varies jointly with the square root of Z and the cube of r. So joint means it's in this form here, y equals uh, k times x times z. They're all multiplied together. Notice they're in the numerator. And so if I was going to write this now, I would say l varies, put our constant of variation, with the square root of z, so the square root of z, 
and the cube of r, so r to the third power. Not the cube root, but the cube, so that's to the third power. Notice these are all multiplied together. They're all in the numerator. We have our constant of variation, and you got it. So great job if you're able to follow this variation uh, video. If you want more practice learning about direct and inverse and the different types of variation, follow me over to a previous video I did right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over there.